welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more of how you would use Axure and where. And this is how I personally used and have used for the last close to five to seven years around that time when I first discovered Axure and start implementing it almost every process step in UX. Let's say some your process could look something like that. On a really high level, I think it applies to every single UX project. It doesn't matter if, if it's product design, service design, customer experience, it doesn't really matter. You would kind of divide it into, let's say, the discovery, the definition, the prototyping and building, and then taking it to, let's say, the delivery of a thing. Or you could also say that, hey, in the discovery, you... I don't know, research things. In ideation, you come up with an, some sort of ideas. In the development, you know, you you put those ideas in practice. And, and then lastly, let's say user test and then build, you know. So there's a lot of different um, disciplines, but let's say let's use design thinking for a sec. And, you know, in kind of that, let's say four to five steps, which everybody can relate to. And where would you use Axure? As you can see, I kind of outline a few different things here and there. But besides that, I have this marker, which I'm just going to copy and paste and kind of tell you exactly how I would use it. Now, in research phase, you could use something like a real time board to gather your insight. Or you could also start putting like a mood board or findings container. And then contain it, let's say, in one of the actual pages or one of the prototypes, which is easy to share and share with the clients and clients can comment. So you can use it that way, let's say, to collaborate. When you, let's say, enter the ideation states um, or let's say even you synthesize and start to put those findings into practice and its actual features. So you could, let's say, use Axure to, let's say, prioritize features. Again, because it's such a flexible product, you could, let's say, outline in a table or, or kind of come up with a structure which makes sense or even drag in, let's say, different uh, best practices. Or let's say here, I would maybe even say in the previous step, we could add something like competition snapshots. So let's say what features does competition use? What's the best practice? You could add that too. And then let's say once you prioritize, you can do something like, I don't know, ideate on the feature so let's say low fidelity prototype would be next and that could be something like um, wireframes let's say black and white wireframes is what they usually use high level wireframes static you know just pure mock-ups nothing fancy no interaction to it and then next you know if you let's say user test or validate the business and you're happy to proceed to interactive bits or you can actually jump right away you can go into high fidelity prototyping, which is basically your clickable versions of, of the mockups you did before. Uh, maybe start to put structure in place, maybe, you know, outline a sitemap too, which I forgot. I think we could add it something like site mapping effort. Uh, because Axure provides, if, let's say, the flows uh, functionality where you can connect uh, different objects with arrows. So you can even make a sitemap before you go to low fidelity prototyping and let's say high fidelity prototyping, which is your actual clickable bits. And I guess that would require a couple of iterations. You know, it, it depends. Maybe you're going to make the high fidelity black and white clickable prototype, or maybe you want to skin it right away into, let's say, colorful type of patterns from sketch, which I used in every other video before now. But basically, maybe it's a prototyping effort number two, especially in, let's say, waterfall type of scenario, which is not ideal. But I've seen some companies who just can't get out of that cycle where we go step by step because we need that safety check of the business and we need that validation before we can proceed with next step. So, you know, all of these steps are basically going one by one instead of going parallel or being skipped. Now it's up to you and your organization which way you go. Agile is always best probably and lean way is always best because you can skip the waste. And perhaps all you need to do in your prototyping is really just, you know, you can skip maybe those two bits. If it's super lean, uh, you can skip maybe that nice to have. Maybe it's just a sitemap and you jump straight into high fidelity prototyping. 
or maybe you have a low fidelity prototyping and then you skip forward. Again, it's it what works for your organization and how you can apply a tool like this. Let's say in prototype test iterate, this is a general statement. Usually you start prototyping in ideation because you know you already have some ideas. Maybe you sketch it in a workshop type of scenario. So you can then start putting into, let's say, storyboards and stuff like that. Um, but basically that last step, which is basically user testing, is, is what I like the most uh, because once you have a high fidelity prototype, maybe version two or something like that, even you can just export it, grab a link, and then in remote or in person scenarios, just user test and capture the findings. You can do that by, let's say, comment capture while user testing or do like some sort of siege, uh, sheets where observers are capturing the findings. And lastly, of course, to complete the cycle, you need to update the prototype. So you keep on hammering and keep on going back. But that's basically how I would use Axure. Again, it's super simple. It's something, you know, it's not rocket science. You probably already had the same ideas. I would like for you to comment down below if you use it somehow differently or you found some sort of different use case for it because it's such a flexible tool. It's kind of like, you know, Sketch, let's say, which you can use for a lot of different variations or like Photoshop, which, you know, from photo software, it became uh, an all rounded web graphics editing software where you can, you know, for do UIs, vector-based uh, illustrations, things of that nature. So it becomes, it blew out of, you know, out of its constraint. And no, no tool which is UX tool could be used just for UX. You could use for so many other things. Particularly in UX, that's how we do it. If you like this video, give a like, subscribe to his channel, leave a comment down below again if you use it differently, and I'll see you next time.